Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stefan Ash and today I'll be going over every setting that you need to change in order to use a controller in Final Fantasy XIV. This video is a part of my ultimate beginner basics for Final Fantasy XIV where I explain the vast world of Eorzea in detail. If you have any topics that you would like to be explained then go ahead and leave a recommendation down below in the comment section. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll share some secret tips in order to get the most out of your controller experience. Without further ado, let's jump over to tutorial ash if you would like to follow along during this tutorial I'll be starting from default settings navigating over to character configuration you'll first want to click the controller icon this will turn on gamepad mode if you don't already have it on which will allow the use of a controller since this is a controller settings guide I will not be going over all the settings but if you'd like me to make a video of that leave a comment down below and hit that subscribe button we will then navigate over to the hotbar section. This is the bulk of what is going to affect our controller gameplay. An important note, hotbars and crossbars are not the same thing. Hotbars are the free floating 1 through 10 and can be clicked on using a mouse or a gamepad mouse. Cross hotbars are directly related to your controller and go up to 8 and can be accessed by mouse or controller. It is good to make the distinction now in order not to get confused later. Starting in the display tab under the hotbar display setting, the changes I make on this screen is more for UI cleanliness. I check hide unassigned slots as it will not display the empty hotbar slots. This will ensure those empty squares are not there and only show up when you're dropping a skill into your hotbar. I uncheck display hotbar numbers. This setting shows what hotbar is which but we address this more in the HUD layout than here in the settings. The only important tip I will mention here is that Hotbar 1 has a lock next to it. Make sure that this is unlocked as it affects all 10 hotbars. Many people make this mistake and wonder why they cannot adjust their hotbars. This is the reason most of the time. Scooting over to the sharing tab. Under the shared hotbar and cross hotbar, you will see the defaults shared. This means that no matter what job you are on, rather it be a battle job or a crafter job, the shared hotbars will be the same anytime you switch. The non-shared hotbars will only be specific to that job. For my example today, I'm going to show you a beginner's view on how to set this up and you can expand or omit whatever you would like. This is solely preference, but basic understanding is needed in order to fully utilize this amazing system. Under the hotbar setting, I'll be only sharing hotbars 7, 8, 9, and 10. For cross hotbar, I will only be sharing 3 and 4. Moving on to the cross hotbar tab. The settings that you will be changing are uncheck display hotbar help. If you are starting from the beginning of the game, you can keep this checked for now, but I find that it blocks some of the icons below and above and players are looking at the words instead of the actual skills. You can leave all other general settings as is for now. Scrolling down to the cross hotbar controls, for this setup you will want to keep hold checked. Hold means that you manually press and hold left or right trigger to access your cross hotbar. Toggle means that you would press the left or right trigger and the cross hotbar will remain open until you input another action. The worst of three is the mixed settings, ignore that one. I always use hold as it gives me full control over my rotation and skills and it's good to build these habits starting off. Going over to cross hotbar display type. I keep this first one checked as it separates the side of the controller by keeping the right 8 buttons to the right trigger and the left 8 buttons to the left trigger. If you were to have the other one checked then both of your directional buttons would be to the left trigger and both letter buttons to the right trigger. That might work for you, but does definitely not click for me. So for this video, I will keep the first one checked. Cross hotbar display setting. This setting is important to give you full access to your secondary cross hotbar view in order to have a streamlined rotation. There are a lot of skills to manage and you need this in order to see everything in one spot. Check always display. Check return to cross hotbar after input. This means once you click a skill, it will automatically put you back down to your main cross hotbar. The most important setting, in my opinion, check position separately. 
This allows for more customization and one of my main reasons why I now love controller in Final Fantasy XIV. Cross Hotbar Timer. This is a matter of equipment you're playing on and preference. For me, I find that 50 is my magical number. I encourage you to play around with this to find out what works for you. All this is saying is how quickly you press the associated button to access your secondary cross hotbar, which is important for the next tab called customs. The timer can be a little confusing. We will come back to the timer after we go over the customs tab. Under customs, you will check expand controls with LT plus RT, left trigger and right trigger. This means when you click the left trigger and hold, and then the right trigger, then you'll have access to cross hotbar 8 left side. Vice versa for the right. I'm actually going to change these to cross hotbar 3 left and cross hotbar right left if you remember these are the cross hotbars that we are sharing with all of our other jobs. I use this setting for all of my jobs in order to create a universal hotbar for teleportation, mounts, and other things I need access to no matter what job I am on. The next thing we'll do is enable simultaneous LT and RT double tap. This is how we access our second cross hotbar that is showing on the bottom of the screen and allows us to get all of our skills for battle on the screen at one time. This is important so you can see the cooldowns, procs, and just have a full view of your skill set. The timer directly affects the second setting where you have to simultaneously press LT or RT in order to access. The lower the timer, the quicker you have to double tap the right trigger or left trigger to access the second hotbar. The higher the timer, the slower you can double tap left trigger or right trigger. So this is why it's a matter of preference and you should play around with it in order to figure out what works for you. Feature of note here is the enable customization for when the weapon is sheathed and drawn. You can do some really cool things here once you get the basics down. So I recommend once you get everything situated on your screen that you come back and mess around with what works for you. I know all this can be overwhelming, but once you get it down, you only have to do it once and you can improve your gameplay experience a hundredfold. Now that we changed all the settings we need in order to more effectively use our controller, I'll go over some bonus tips for all of you who stayed. We will be adjusting the second cross hotbar in the HUD layout. As long as you checked display separately, you'll be able to individually adjust each side. How I like to set up my layout is actually stacked right on top of each other. This allows for you to see the correlating buttons to the second hotbar and not guess as well as keep everything neat and organized for your UI. Under the character configuration and then control settings, click the target tab. Click on Type 2 Cone when targeting closest enemies. This made it loads easier to control who I was fighting. This could make your experience way better because now you're not targeting people that are over 100 feet away when you're actually trying to talk to someone right in front of you. Under the Filters tab, you're going to scroll down to While Weapon is Drawn. Unclick NPC and Objects. This will stop you from targeting random NPCs when you're trying to do battles with computer NPCs or you're in a duty instant. This last one is for UI cleanliness again. Scroll over to Character tab, down to Battle Effects Settings and click on Show Limited for Party and Others. This will actually allow you to see what's going on. As you get later in the game, there are so many effects going on and you can lose track of what's happening between all party members. This way you can only see the important ones like healer circles, friendly ground AOEs, etc. Well, that's the end of my ultimate controller guide for Final Fantasy XIV. If you have any questions or recommendations for other videos or even constructive criticism, then leave a comment down below and I will see you all in my next video.